the theory of the living earth. What does it mean to be alive? Most scientists would agree that if something is alive, it would have functions such as metabolism, maintain homeostasis, growth, reproduction, breathing, and response to stimuli or adaptation to the environment. We can find life that have these functions on every plane, from microscopic creatures to gigantic undersea monsters. But something which no one seems to talk about, but we all can sense and feel on some level, is that Earth itself is alive. Yes, Earth is what they call a superorganism. And believe it or not, up until the 19th century, scientists were comfortable with the theory of the living Earth. Native Americans and other native peoples around the globe have long held the belief that Earth is alive. And even the ancient Greeks had a goddess of the Earth that they called Gaia. The human body is like a planet. 90% of the cells within us are not ours, but microbes. We may not realize it, but each one of us is a walking ecosystem. Minuscule eight-legged demodex mites nestle head down inside the follicles of the eyelashes, feasting unnoticed on skin cells. Microscopic bacteria live on the tongue, teeth and skin, and in the intestine. In essence, many scientists are now beginning to believe that Earth itself and life on Earth have evolved together over time in such a way that each has affected the other every step of the way. Rather than life on Earth simply reacting to the environment, life on Earth also affects and changes the environment around it. When we think of the Earth holistically as one living entity of its own, instead of the sum of its parts, it takes on a new meaning. Our planet functions as a single organism that maintains conditions necessary for its survival. If you step back and compare properties of Earth to elements of the human, one could clearly see some similarities. Like many living creatures, Earth has a highly organized structure, a membrane and daily rhythms. It consumes, stores and transforms energy. The homeostasis regulated by the Earth is much like the internal maintenance of our own bodies. Processes within our body ensure a constant temperature, blood pH, electrochemical balance, etc. The inner workings of Gaia, therefore, can be viewed as a study of the physiology of the Earth, where the oceans and rivers are the Earth's blood, the atmosphere is the Earth's lungs, the land is the Earth's bones, and the living organisms are the Earth's senses. This is known as the science of geophysiology. If Earth is a self-sustaining organism, it probably needs nutrients, and one can argue that the sun, space dirt which is constantly absorbed by Earth, and the decomposition of biological elements on Earth, which are absorbed back into the ecosystem, are all forms of nutritional sustenance to maintain homeostasis. When two humans reproduce, they share genetic traits which the new life would inherit. And similarly, one can argue that the moon not only shares traits with the Earth, but the popular theory is that the moon was created from the Earth. If humans inhabit the moon, and if we terraform the moon, over time it would look and function just like Earth. Much like the way bacteria or viruses infect their host, life could have arrived on the planet fully formed in the form of some fertilized rocky panspermia contained within its DNA required to incubate the rocky planet with the necessary pathogens, bacteria, single-celled organisms, elements, atmosphere, and nutrients required for Gaia to grow into a healthy adult. The process may take billions of years, but from the moment sperm from another planet fertilizes the Earth, Gaia is born. Is this proof Earth is a living creature? Earth can be seen as a huge, complex system in which the environment and living things interact constantly to form a self-regulating whole. While still not a living organism like a plant, animal, or human being, Earth can nonetheless be seen as a living system that behaves in significant ways like a living organism. 
Has anyone else ever felt like the planet was alive? Leave your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Some things in life are known only by a few and those who possess this knowledge rule the world. Subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge for weekly videos to expand your mind. Thanks for watching.